Hi YouTube, Tamara here, and today we have a special guest. Today we have Len Lawson. He is a poet and a friend of mine, and I wanted to introduce him to you guys so you can learn a little bit more about poetry other than out of my mouth. Um, so I'm going to read you his author profile. Len Lawson began his writing career by writing by winning third place in a middle school poetry contest for Arbor Day and winning honorable mention for a high school essay contest on the American flag. Since then, he has been writing poetry, short stories, and has begun a fiction novel series. He has a master's degree in English from National University near San Diego, California. He teaches English at Morris College in Sumter, South Carolina, where he was named the 2012-2013 Professor of the Year. Len also teaches adjunct English classes at various colleges and universities in South Carolina. When he is not writing books, Len is a freelance editor and a guest contributor to local newspapers. Hi, Len. Thanks for coming. Hey, what's up? Glad to be here. Excited about talking to you and your Twit, your uh, not Twitter, your YouTube viewers. So uh, let's have some fun. Let's do it. And there might be some viewers on YouTube who will check this out too, or Twitter. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Twitter just came out of my mouth first, but okay. So, um, so why did you decide to continue with writing poetry? I think a lot of people start writing poetry when they're little, you know, you might at school learn how to write a poem or two and after that a lot of people just let it go but why did you continue with it um that's a good question out of the gate um uh i i guess i, I really didn't know what i was doing when i started writing poems it just was something that came naturally like i would you know i would just start writing something and then you know the words just came out but then, uh, probably about three to five years ago, I decided that I was gonna, you know, start trying to put stories together with characters and setting and, you know, symbols and, you know, because literature is my real passion. So I could appreciate that from things that I would read. So I would just start trying to put together stories. And then I joined uh, in South Carolina here this uh, writers group and uh, really started to develop as a writer of fiction. But then at the same time, um, the poem started to come back and then uh, I guess I was just finding more, more poems uh, as far as poetry is concerned. I just have both. So it's kind of a hybrid of poems and stories. But uh, Recently, I've just been strictly in the poetry vein, and I, I don't know, is I have a manuscript probably uh, last year or so this, I, I haven't really had like any real ideas for stories or, or novels to carry those out. And then um, with the poems, you know, they, they just come really quick. So I would I can work on those, you know, for like a week or two or, or maybe longer and then come back to those rather than be uh, somewhat caged in a novel or in a story. <laughs> so it's a lot easier, you know, to move in and out of the poem. So, I, and I guess those have been uh, uh, published more frequently or more successfully than uh, the stories have. So I don't know, I'm just in a poetry kind of vein or poetry mode the last several months. So who knows, I may go back to stories, you never know. I do agree that with poetry, there is a bit more flexibility in terms of kind of completing a project. Um, so with your poetry, um, um, what kind of poetry do you like to write? I don't know if it's a, uh, if there's a specific uh, form. Um, I would say that uh, I'm doing a lot more uh, free verse now. Like sometimes I'll, you know, be fascinated by a form and, you know, try to write in one particular form. Like uh, I might be in like sonnet mode 
one one week or one month or something, or move on to like Sestina or Villanelle or something like that, just so I can you know develop my craft, you know. But most of the work I'm doing now, there's there's not necessarily a form, but uh, occasionally it'll, I'll go to a particular form, or maybe I'll just try to make up a form, you know. Uh, Terrence Hayes, who's from uh, South Carolina. Uh, you know, he's, he's, uh, famous for creating his own forms of poems, you know? So, you know, sometimes if, if I'll just like see something I want to write about, then, uh, I'll see what type of, uh, you know, lines or like perhaps rhyme that I might want to put it in. But, um, I basically just like to, uh, see, see, I might see something throughout the day or while I'm driving and I might get like a line or two and then I'll like develop that out, you know, over time or over the next several weeks. So it all depends on what's happening in the moment. So it's it's pretty, pretty raw, pretty, uh, pretty free. I'm not really confined to like a particular style, I suppose. Has there been any particular subject matters that you've been compelled to write about in the last few months? Absolutely. Well, being from South Carolina and the dubious and infamous things that are going on here right now, uh, from Walter Scott to his from his shooting to, uh, of course, the Charleston Nine to the Confederate flag, um, and then recently with uh, uh, just this week with Officer Ben Fields and uh that case with the student at spring valley there's just so many things to write about concerning race you know so uh even if i want if i wanted to get away from writing about it then uh i can't because it's it's always in the forefront here you know it's uh i said i've <laughs> i'm been saying a lot nowadays that race is the currency of the South. You know, it's like that's the way people relate to one another here. Like if you if you're a particular race, then that's how you're perceived as, you know, being a certain stereotype. So you can't really get away from that, especially when it's all not only in the local and regional news, but it's in the national news and even international. So, uh, yeah, that's something that uh, is, is kind of a burden. I feel like it's a, it's a burden in a in a way that like it's something that has to come out of me that if I don't write about it, then it's going to feel like uh, I'm not fulfilling something if I don't write about it. You understand what I'm saying? So definitely uh, race. I, I had at one point been writing a lot of poems about my father who passed away when I was 12 and uh, just adding some closure to that situation because um, there are a lot of unanswered things that I, that I didn't know about him or about uh, his death. So for a little while I was in a lot of, I was doing a lot of poems about that, but I think I got that out of my system. <laughs> so uh, those are, I was writing a lot about. So it, it just depends on, like I said earlier, like where I am, and what I feel like writing about in the moment. Being from West Virginia, I can absolutely relate to feeling compelled to write about race, especially being an African-American female from the area. Um, and sometimes, sometimes for me anyway, it does feel like a burden because I might not necessarily want to write about race, but I'll feel that I need to say it. Or that if I mm -hmm. avoid the topic that, that, I don't know, that it's like a detriment to my readers or my followers or, or even to myself, as though I'm neglecting something if I don't talk about race. Do you feel that kind of pressure? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't even say it's it's a pressure, but, but you know, it's just something that comes out. Um, uh, I'm not really sure how to how to explain it or how to, or what to relate it to. You know, um, it just feels like you know 
is my contribution to uh, the culture or our culture, society or our genre or anything that that I'm writing about or uh, that I've been gifted or, or talented or blessed to be able to share with everybody else. You know, um, you know, I could write about nature poems. I could write about, uh, you know, my family. I could write about, uh, you know, my goals or dreams or things like that. You know, I, there, there are tons of different themes that you could go on, but this is just so visceral right now that, I mean, just as it was, you know, in the 60s during uh, civil rights movement and a lot of, uh, you know, minority writers, African-American writers wrote about those things that were happening as they were happening. But, you know, and then at the same time, a few uh, felt that, or maybe not even a few felt that, you know, well, I need to be an individual and, you know, this does not need to define me. So it all depends on who you are as a person, but I can only speak for myself that when I want to write about other things, you know, it just keeps drawing me in, you know? So I just want my readers to realize that, you know, this is, uh, uh, do matter. And it is, this is something that is not only going on today, but has gone on for, you know, centuries or, you know, since the beginning. So it, I, I just feel like, you know, I, there's nothing that I can get away from, at least not right now. What do you think about using poetry as kind of a form of activism? That's an excellent question. Um, I actually did uh, an interview with uh, Mariah Dessa Carey Talley, and she wrote a book called uh, Dear Continuum that is, uh, it talks about the very same thing. She has different letters that she wrote to uh, different people that uh, she had mentored as a writer or uh, different people that she stayed in touch with. And part of it was, you know, well, you know, how do I use my writing as activism? And, you know, in my conversations with her, you know, I even asked her, you know, did her activism come first or did her writing come first? Or, you know, how does she balance the two? But, uh, you know, I, th I think from my conclusion from what I asked her is that, you know, it, it whatever is in you is going to come out of you. So if you feel compelled to have a voice for a certain issue or a certain platform, then, you know, that will come out in your writing. You know, that if it, it, whatever is in you will be displayed on the page. So it, but if it's not in you, then, you know, you know, either you're going to labor to write about it or it's going to be something you have, like you said, pressure is you're going to feel like pressure to put something down on the page and it may not be your best. Or, you know, if, you're, if it's something you're very passionate about, then, you know, that will come across. So as a matter of fact, concerning activism um, here in South Carolina, uh, a friend of my, another poetry friend of mine, Al Black, uh, we started a uh, Poets Respond to Race initiative where we go around to uh, different cities here locally and uh, just start the conversation on race and diversity and uh, things like that with poetry. So a lot of the poems that I've been writing, you know, in the last several months, I will read and he's written some as well. And uh, and he's a he's a, a white male. He's from uh, Indiana originally. So or from up north and he uh, moved down to the south. So he brings a different perspective on it. So collaborating with him and just converse, conversations with him about it and also with the audiences that we've had, it's helped to. Uh, different groups of people that may not be in the same audience or in the same circle or neighborhood to get a better understanding of one another, not necessarily to be uh, politically correct, but to get the get the world as everyone in the room sees it. And so that's been helpful. Uh, we've gone around to several cities so far and we're, we're still being asked to go different places to display our work. And sometimes we'll bring in uh, guest poets as well. And uh, from different backgrounds, uh, different ethnicities 
just so uh, everybody brings their own flavor to it because it's not just a black issue, uh, race in this country. You know, it affects everyone. It has, uh, like I said, for a very long time. So that's my, uh, that's what I believe right now is my contribution. Um, there are other, th other things that I've, you know, thought about doing or, you know, had an idea to do, but it just hasn't materialized yet. So we'll see what happens. But, um, you know, the, the thing that I'm trying not to do, though, is burn myself out over a lot of these things that are happening, because it seems like month to month, even week to week, there's another uh, police brutality case or another case concerning race or murder or what have you. And, you know, no one can no human or mortal can be a superhero uh, to attack all these things. So we have to do a lot of our activism in moderation so that, you know, we we each have to put our own selves into the picture. But sometimes we have to, you know, pull back a little bit and, you know, regroup at times. So that's just what I'm doing right now. I, I definitely appreciate that. Uh, I think that because like you said, there are so many things that are happening and it's weekly, you begin to feel fatigued. It's wearing. And I mean, I'm not to say that I, I mean, personally, sometimes I have to pull back because it just becomes too much. And then, you know, I'll, I'll pull back for a little bit from social media because that's usually where I'll find out about something that's happened, especially Twitter. <laughs> and then, yeah, <laughs> you know, Twitter, Twitter's on it <laughs> and, you know, pull back for a couple days and then kind of re-engage with it because I just need that time just to level out a little bit. What kind of response have you been getting from the um, to the post respond to race initiative? I think uh, the audience that audiences that we've had so far, uh, they they all say that it's something necessary. Um, they appreciate the fact that we're we're doing this, that a white person and a black person can uh, you know get can do this and you know, make it about, uh, you know, not just a rant or a rave or just, you know, white supremacy or black supremacy, you know, not just that one race is better than another, but just to, you know, put the issues forth and to see what they are and then even come up with solutions. We even uh, had a town hall meeting here where I'm from in Sumter, South Carolina, where, uh, uh, Al and I, we, we read po poems, but we also had uh, several city officials in the uh, in the audience as well or on a panel like with the mayor, the uh, sheriff, uh, the city solicitor and uh, other law enforcement officials. And just to, uh, you know, discuss what's happening in this town, you know, and to see, you know, what can not only these elected officials and law enforcement do, but what can everyday citizens do? You know, what can I do, you know, as a person just living, you know, in a neighborhood on a street and, you know, just to help the kid next door or help some kids that uh, I see that no one is helping or can I mentor somebody or anything that I can do, you know, to address what's happening in our nation. So those are things that, you know, like I said, uh, those are projects that that we have on the table that we like to do. So that's just something that we've already done. Um, but the response has been good so far. And like I said, uh, we do have like uh, some colleges in the, in the state of South Carolina that want us to come and have a reading or a forum and uh, just recently, we were asked for the uh, the new uh, book festival here in South Carolina to come and, and do a panel as well. So the response has been good. And I think as more cases and uh, 
events get into the news that our work will begin to enhance because it'll be more necessary, unfortunately. As you look to the future, um, do you have other projects that are kind of on the, the sidelines waiting for you to pick them up or is this initiative your main focus right now? Um, I'd say it's, uh, it's, it's probably a, uh, one of the top priorities right now, but going back to the poetry, um, I'm really trying to, uh, be in a, I don't want to say a state of rest, but just a, a state of getting better at, at my craft as a poet, because, um, I don't want to be the type of poet that's out there, like, you know, trying to promote, 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 but then, you know, the work falls short. So I'm still trying to figure out, you know, who is Lynn Lawson, the poet, you know? So I haven't, honestly, I, I haven't been publishing for, for very long. Um, when I, uh, published the, the book there, uh, that was the first time that I really started to, you know, display it publicly. So in the last year, you know, things have been hap happening, or uh, the work has been getting out there pretty, pretty quickly. So it's it's kind of astounding to see the response from it so far. But I know that you know I'm nowhere near where I, where I could be going. So I'm always looking for like workshops or you know in the in the state or even out of state that are happening to get better at my craft. And that's that's something I would say to your viewers too that all if. They are writers or want to be writers, you know, there, there's got to be some writers group or some uh, workshop conference, something or where people are talking about writing somewhere. So to get involved in that and to constantly be striving for, you know, a, the better work, a better work, you know, because if someone asks you, you know, what's your what's your best poem that you've ever written? Then, you know, the the best response is that, you know, it hasn't been written yet that you know there's something else always to be written so um i'm still looking for that so aside from you know the activism and my day job which is uh teaching colleges um i'm just trying to get better every day as a writer why did you decide to uh go into teaching <laughs> Oh, that's a long story. <laughs> um, let me see. I think because I was failing at everything else, <laughs> that's the that's the easy answer. But um, uh, I honestly was thought to myself, well, as I guess as a lot of writers and and poets and and others do, you know, the the best way right now in order to maintain a living and continue to be able to work on your craft, I guess, is to teach, you know, because uh, it allows me flexibility to be able to write. And, um, you know, I just I just love it. I've, it's also what I'm passionate about. You know, um, I'm still passionate. I've been doing it probably now for almost 10 years now, teaching it on uh, various levels like public school and also college. So. Um, I still get passionate whenever the students get it and then, you know, whenever we're talking about, like I said, literature and uh, poetry and like we read certain things, you know, it still it still gets me up in the morning. You know, it's, it's not like work to me. So I, that's what I feel passionate about. But the way it started is um, I, I actually graduated my undergrad with a business degree because out of high school, you know, Coming from a small rural town, you know, first you had to get out of the town. That was the main thing. Get out of the small town. And then the next thing was you had to make a lot of money. So the best way to do that is to go into business world. So I wanted to do that. OK, then I graduated from uh, undergrad. And I tried my hand at the business world. I was, you know, I was OK at it, you know, mildly successful, but uh, it still just was not what I was passionate about. So there was still a void there for me. So I decided to regroup and figure out, you know, how can I do this writing thing and, 
you know, not starve, not be a starving artist. So that's when I went back to, to uh, school for my master's. And um, at the same time, I was teaching middle school at the time. So uh, that's how the teaching came about. And then uh, my goal was always to to end up like on the college level at some point and and still write. So uh, thank God I'm able to do that. You know, it's that was I'm, you know, we don't have the time to talk about how much of a journey that was, but, you know, it didn't come easy. So I'm just thankful. And, um, you know, eventually it will it will amount to something, I hope, if not if it's not already. So, yeah, that's what I like. I'm doing what I love to do, which is which is great. I love to teach and I love to write at the same time. So. A lot of people, when I talk to them about poetry, they'll say that they don't like poetry and it's because of how it was taught to them when they were in high school or something that they just, they don't really know how to read it now. What would you say to those people to kind of encourage them to read more poetry? <laughs> Man, if I could bottle that, I'd be rich. <laughs> <laughs> like the cure, the remedy, the cure, the elixir for getting people to like poetry. Um, I would say there's so much poetry out there today. This is a great time to be a poet, to be a writer, to be to to be anything in the arts. I believe it's a good t even though it's being marginalized in maybe public schools and um, not much is being uh, uh, said or spoken or written about. Uh, to get students passionate about it, but if if people are out of school and they, and they haven't had a good experience with it, then I would say that there is there is an author out there somewhere that you can relate to. There's a poet out there, uh, you know, from the same background as you, from this maybe even the same town as you, that uh, is writing about something that you want to hear about, because you know the landscape is so vast right now with uh, black poets, you know, Asian poets, Latino poets, LGBT uh, poets, um, just all types of people writing from their own perspective, you know. So there's got to be something out there that's appealing, you know, because I know in school I'm, I'm, you know, one of those, <laughs> one of those uh, professors teaching, you know, Emily Dickinson. Robert Frost, Langston Hughes, William Blake, etc., and you know, you know, a lot of people can't really relate to those things, you know, the 16th century, 17th century poetry. So, but there, is, there are several people out there today writing about so many different things that you know you can be hooked because I know I am. I'm a, I'm a poetry fan. So there's always uh, someone or something to, or some new book or. Uh, some new person to, you know, follow and understand them as a person, you know, because uh, I think nowadays uh, the poets aren't larger than life the way we see the poets that were in different centuries, you know, like, uh, you know, Robert Frost was like iconic as a, as a poet, you know, Maya Angelou is like somebody we, we feel we can't even touch, but, you know, there's so many contemporary poets out there now that, you know, they're as, as close as, you know, your keyboard on your laptop or your phone. You know, all you have to do is do a Google search and you can find several different poets and different books and, uh, you know, find what appeals to you. So there's no excuse. That's what I tell students. There's, there's a cop out. You can't. There's got to be somebody or some some uh, theme out there that you can relate to. And my last question that I ask everybody that comes here, what advice would you give to any writers or any poets who are watching this right now? What's that one nugget of truth that you want to lay on them? <laughs> I'm always trying to get everybody else's nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have nuggets? 
you have think? to have nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm the I'm I always thinking myself as 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 a student of the game, so I'm always trying to learn. Well, I guess maybe that's it. You know, to continue to to advance yourself. Well, I guess figure out who you are and what you do. And then once you do that, then find a way to bottle that successfully and then do it consistently, you know, because I think the the best poets, you know, they tap into who they are and they don't concern themselves with, you know, who everybody else is or what everybody else is doing. And, um, you know, but they still, you know, have a good grasp of, you know, what's going on in the poetry world now. Like this, you have to read, first of all, to figure out, you know, what's going on or what's, you know, what the trends are. But, you know, you have to figure out, you know, what is what what am I doing this for? You know, and who is out there that's going to read what I'm writing? So once you I think once you tap into that, then you know, everything else will fall into place. That that goes for fiction as well as poetry, you know, because like I said a second ago, you know, there's somebody out there waiting to read what we what we want to write. You know, we just have to find who they are. That's the that's the tough part sometimes is finding your audience. So, you know. I hope that's a nugget. See, I told you you had nuggets. <laughs> I hope that helps. I think so. I think that was some great advice. Some advice that I certainly can use myself. So um, once again, thank you so much, Len, for coming and chatting with me about poetry. Um, in case you guys are interested, um, I will have the link in the downstairs for the very least of me, which is Len's um, his uh, written work that was published in 2014 last year. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. and I will leave his uh, social media stuff and the Goodreads link and all of that. And you can follow him, chat with him, find him on your own time. And this, again, my name is Tamara and you have been on my channel. And once a month I have an author that I chat with about, writerly things so i will see you guys in the next video and thank you so much for watching bye <laughs>